How's it going guys? It is Ryan here and welcome back to the F1 1997 career mode where we're here at the Circuit de Catalunya here in Spain and it is raining which is not what I've done before on this mod so I'm into unknown territory here for the fifth round of our career mode but I want to quickly say guys thank you so much for the support from the last episode the live episode at Monaco a lot of people were very happy with it and got some good feedback so I will be doing more of this later on in the series so keep an eye out guys on here and also on my Twitter so make sure to follow it it is in the description below of this video so please make sure to head over to my Twitter and smash the follow button and if you haven't already make sure to subscribe if you're a big fan of the classic seasons of 97, 2007 or whatever your favourite season was. The classics were good. But anyway, it is raining 70% chance of rain for this race as we are in the Minardi as always. And we're still keeping the tradition of the Minardi in real life by starting at the back of the field. No qualifying whatsoever and baseline sets to make the car so bad in the corners that we have to work our asses off to try and get into the top 10 which is our goal once again in this race. The grid, it's the same as always. Schumacher, Villeneuve and Frenton and Irvine are the top four as always, the two Williams and the two Ferraris. At the back, it's the same really. We've got two Minardis and two Stewards at the back, so we'll see how this goes as the revs are building. The fifth round of the F1 1997 career mode, and away we go here in Spain. And it's an all right start from us, I guess, but we're over revving it too much here, which will slow us down, as you can see. But to be fair, we're in a very good position here because we could see some wrecks going on at turn one or the AI will go really slowly through here. So we're going to be breaking a bit earlier than others and all the chaos is ensuing right now with cars checking up everywhere as we're going to go through some of the cars and we're up to P19, 20, uh, 18 actually. So we've made a decent start off the line here. We just need to be very cautious as we go into turn three, which is where all hell breaks loose. Oh, turn four, sorry. And there's been some contact there between us, Verstappen and Lorini. I think Verstappen went to the back of Lorini and we had nowhere to go and we just go into the back of Verstappen and we have got some damage on the front wing there, the, the left-hand side of the front wing, but we're going to go down the inside of Verstappen and also Johnny Herbert up to 15th place we go. So it's been a mixed bag of a start there from us. We've got positions, but we've lost a bit of front wing, which obviously will mean we will not have a lot of grip through the corners during the stages of the race before we make our pit stop and our pit stop will be long as well which is not what we wanted but we're making ground which is the main factor here in Spain where it is raining as always 70% chance so there could be maybe a repeat of the 2014 season career mode if anyone remembers that it was a classic I will let you find that video somewhere if it does happen but we're on to the back of Lorini already and we've got Nakano ahead as well who's holding up Lorini in the Sauber, so we could maybe try and get past him and maybe fight for a top 10 as we're very close to the top 10 as we could go down the inside of the Sauber of Lorini and we're up into P14. So it's been a good start from us there. Eight positions gained on the first lap. But as you can see, traction is a nightmare in the Minardi, so we've got to be very, very careful to not spin the rears and spin off out of that last corner or anywhere. So we need to be very careful as we're going to hit over 200 miles an hour down the straight as we break into turn one and it's nicely uh, carefully done there through turns one and two maybe taking a bit too much curb there losing the back end here and the Minardi is so bad through turn three here that we lose so much time to the pack and look, you can see Lorini's already on the back of us here looks like he's going to make a move into turn five but he has nowhere to go and has to back out turn four sorry has to back out of it on there so we have got a bit of saving grace that the AI are not really good round here I've got to say but at some corners they are quick, like that turn sweeping turn three is one of them uh, on there. So we're going to go on to lap three and the gap behind is still the same and in front really is the same as well. But as you can see, I think there's about seven, eight cars in that leading pack around the final corner already putting away. So that's not what we, that's uh, obviously going to happen there. And then there's the second train here, led from, I believe it's about 10th place downwards. So we're not far off 10th place actually. So. Temp is on the cards for the, for um, our goals today as we set a 36 flat, which is obviously not going to be quick in the Minardi. As I made some tweaks to the performance just to make it a bit harder for the Minardis and to make it more realistic there. So we're about two and a half seconds off the pace, which is obviously realistic. So I'm going to um, sort that out. As you can see, just can't get any grip on the tyres there with our setup, and Lorini's all over the back of us once again as we break into the start of the middle sector now and uh, 2.1 seconds is the gap to Nakano ahead of us 
as Larini is all over the back of us. And I think his teammate as well, Johnny Herbert, is behind him. So we've got a lot of fighting to go on here. It's actually a Sauber, I think. I'm not too sure. Uh, not a Sauber. I've always said Sauber. A, a Benetton or something like that. I can't tell from the rear mirrors as it's completely covered with water, which is one fact that I loved on this game is uh, the rain and it just meant a bit uh, a challenge of visibility uh, out of that corner we were a bit slower than the arena he tries he's thinking of a move down the inside but it's just nowhere to go and backs out of it as we go into the hairpin to start the final sector of this lap as uh, we're, we're doing okay i mean it's not the quickest we're still in with a shot of a top 10. temp's not far away but the sack the first group have just gone they've just completely gone away from the rest of the pack but we're going to be going on into lap six now and as you can see, we've started to build a gap to Larini behind, which is what we wanted. And the gap in front's not really changed. We've, ma we've somehow managed to match the Carno's times. But it's 2.3 seconds. It's nothing too big of a gap. We can push a little bit harder now as, we as the rain is still increasing. But uh, we're going to be coming to the pit stop phases now as uh, these rears are very bad around here. So um, the rears on these intermediate tyres are starting to fall off the cliff there as we just go a bit wide out of that corner now as we go into the sweeping right-hander where the AI are ridiculously quick as well compared to us. We can't put the power down for some strange reason where the a AI can in wet conditions. So we've got to think about that very shortly. As you can see, there are now two trains, uh, three trains formed actually. One is the leading two. Then it's the podium, for battle for the podium. Then it's for the top five. So and then the top 10 so there's a lot of action going on throughout the field throughout this race and we just lose the back end slightly there but nothing too serious there as we come in to the last couple of corners here of this circuit to Catalonia and it is weird seeing them take the current layout it is very bizarre uh, on there as we're going to be diving into the pits there trying to do an undercut on the cars in front which could be a bit risky but it could also work at the same time as we go into our pit box now uh, on there but let me know guys in the comments below what was your best layout? Was, is it the current layout you got now? Or was it the classic one where they just went flat through the last two corners? Let me know what your thoughts are on that. But we're going to be going to the pit stop now as it's going to be a slow stop as obviously we had to take a new front wing from the damage on the first lap. So it's a 6.1 stop as Heintel French is in 21st. So I don't know what's happened to him. Did he pit early? I'm not too sure. But he's down in 21st place. So very strange strategy from Williams to pit him this earlier than me so very weird I've got to say which could hinder his championship contentions as obviously he is up there I believe he's second in the championship so this is not what Frenson needs as we're going to be going now through this uh, the middle sector once again we've got some clean track so we can really push now whilst the pack uh, a few of the cars in front are uh, fighting for positions there so we're going to go on to lap 8 now coming up to half distance and the gap is still 13.1 seconds so we're not really gaining much as we're coming down the straight now towards turn one and the field is completely spread out which is something I've not seen in a while so on there on there as um, the engineer is telling us that we've only got about 10 minutes before the rain will ease so that will be interesting um, if the tr if it dries up quick enough are we going to be going on to the dry tyres at the end of the race is going to be the big question the big talking point and we could have a repeat of what, ex what we experienced a few uh, on our career mode on 2014 our proper career mode um, which proved to be one of the best races I've done in a while which, where we came from like 17th to win the race which was ridiculous and a shot load of retirement so we could see a repeat of that in this episode we've got to wait and see and find out now as we're going to go on to the next lap here as we're onto the back of Olivier Panis now who is the first man who uh, made a pit stop from the train that we were fighting with so we're not that far off him actually with Johnny Herbert one and a half seconds behind who did who was behind us so um, we've gained we've gained but we've lost time so being on our own so it's not what we wanted as you can see this is dry line slowly emerging there as a few people will be entering the pits right now where we'll be gaining quite a few more positions throughout the field so we're going to see how we come out as we come out the final corner now to start lap number 10 with only eight laps to go are we going to gain some positions there as we can see Larini is coming out as well and we've also got I think that's Nakano coming out down the straight and we're going to get past him actually so we're up to P13 so we've gained a position throughout the pit stop phases there so it's a great um, so it's, it's great I guess but it's not what we wanted we've gained a position but not many positions that we were expected to on there but as you can see the track is is slowly getting drier 
and drier every corner we go on. There's still spray. Obviously, it's still wet for uh, it's too wet for the dry tyres at the minute. But I'm just getting ready to take a massive gamble and go on to the options at some stage with eight laps to go. We don't know if it is um, dry enough yet for the uh, for the options, as I've just said. But it looks from initial thoughts that it is so close to the switch over to the dry tyres, but it's not yet. We've got a lot of spray still coming off there as Nakano has got a beautiful run through the right hand, as I've said. And he's all over the back of us as we go into the last sector right now as Panis has got a 2.7 second lead over us uh, on there. So it's going to be a bit of a tough cookie here to try and break as Villeneuve now sets a 32 flat, which is nearly three seconds a lap quicker than us. Obviously showing the gap, the, the balance of performance between the Williams and the Minardi is great. So making it realistic for you guys and that's how I do it but we go very wide over the curb there but as we're going to go very wide out of the right hander on lap 11 uh, Lucano tried to make a move on us there but just maybe tapped the back of us there and uh, maybe got some damage from that so we need to be very careful there to not get any more damage from the back of the car as we've already had some incidents already on the first lap of the race so we need to be very cautious here as Herbert got past Lucano as well so we may have picked up some damage as Herbert gets through up to 14th place now as Panis there is uh, slowly putting away from us there, but we're going to be going round once again with the track still wet, but the, the, not a lot of spray there, which gives me the indication of maybe to pit very soon. Maybe is the question. As Frentzen now makes his pit stop, so he could be the one taking the gamble already on the dry tyres. We have to wait and see. We've still got six laps to go in this race, so we don't know what's going to happen in these later stages of this uh, Spanish Grand Prix here in Spain but we're going to go into the end of the lap and uh, Johnny Herbert's actually catching up with us as Palace is putting away when we did pit a bit earlier than the rest of the pack there but we're just losing a bit of speed now as we come into the final um, corner but we're going to be down into the pit lane right now for our final stop of the race and it will be a gamble on to the option tyres for the final time so we're going to have a five lap sprint on the option tyres but the question is is it dry enough for the uh, option tyres as the boys get on to doing their pit stop and it's a decent stop of 3.7 better than the 6 point whatever we had before obviously that was in um, with a broken front wing so we're going to come out in last place which is obviously not where we want to finish but we will be on the quicker tyre so the question is is it dry enough and the answer is yes but no There's also, there are some parts of the lap where the track is damp but there are parts of the lap where it's dry so we're going to be pushing now we're in plus one laps of fuel but we are saving a bit of fuel to wait till we have an assault on the last few laps of the Spanish Grand Prix we're not far off actually a few of the drivers so we've got to be thinking about that as we go on to lap uh, the end of lap 15 where we're on the back of a few cars as it is bone dry now for the option tyres and everyone is still out on the intermediate so we're going to start now gaining a few positions as we set a 33 flat only shy of the lap record from uh, Jack Villeneuve there so that's just showing you the pace of the Minardi compared to the Williams that time obviously Villeneuve was on the intermediates we're on the drives so that just shows you how bad the Minardi is uh, on here so we've already gained a position on Mika Salo and we're going to try and get past uh, Jan Magnussen as uh, we're going to go past him now, up to 20th place, and now we've got Rubens Barrichello in the sh in the other Stewart, who is obviously one of our rivals in the championship. As the they are all struggling now on these inters, and we're just going to breeze past Barrichello up to 19th place. Next up is Pedro Diniz and our teammate as well. As uh, they are, as I said, they are all struggling here, and the gap there is about three seconds uh, to Pedro Diniz. But as you can see, we're already putting a massive gap to Barrichello behind. So they are taking a massive gamble here that the tyres could go off the cliff, maybe even get punctures or even retire from the race. So this is going to be very close here uh, for them and I'll give them respect if they can stay out on track and survive. But we're already 2.5 seconds behind Pedro Diniz now as we come into the final sector for the penultimate time here in Spain. And as you can see we just get so much grip compared to the rest of the pack ahead of us. We're already onto the back of Pedro Diniz now and our teammate of Katayama just nowhere to go. We're going to, uh, Deniz leaves the door open and we're going to take it up to 18th place we go and our teammates ahead of us now as we're going to be starting the final lap now 
of the Spanish Grand Prix. Maybe we pitted too early. That's going to be a, f uh, a thing to think about at the end of the race here. As we're going to be coming down the straight now for the final time, hitting over 200 miles an hour. And Katayama, um, Katayama is it? I can't tell. Uh, it is Katayama, sorry, as the, my footage went a bit blurry then when I was going back over this. Uh, we did get past him at a late risk move into turn one there. So we're up to 17th place now. Next up is um, Verstappen in the tour and we nearly go into the back of him there not a repeat of the first lap and we get away with it as Jacques Villeneuve has already crossed the finish line to win the Spanish Grand Prix from Michael Schumacher so that is big for the championship on there as we're going to be getting to the nitty gritty stages now where the middle half of the season where it's going to get interesting with the tracks we've got lined up on there but we're not over yet though as we can still catch up to Meccano there as you can see we're not far off him as we come into the final sector now for the final time and can we catch up to it? the gap is around about 4.1 seconds can we have it I'm not too sure we will but this is a more traction area um, for the final sector so we may have a chance here of gaining another position but it's not where we're going to be so where we want to be which is a bit disappointing from that so when we go back over this race we can look back and say we did have a bad strategy on us there. Coming out the final corner now, and are we going to get enough grip here? We do. The corner is struggling on his tyres here, and we could maybe get 15th place here as we come across the line, get some slipstream. Are we going to do it? The answer is no. We just miss out on 15th place, but our guy's actually happy, so I don't know what happened there. I don't know why he's happy, um, considering we're trying to go for top 10 finishes, but it's a decent finish anyway. But strategy really did cost us there. We pit, it's a bit too early on the option tyres there and uh, we finished down in 16th place as Frentzen in 13th there on there. But there is the top 10 guys. Jacques Villeneuve wins from Schumacher and Mick Hacker getting the first podium for McLaren this season which isn't a Williams or a Ferrari so props to McLaren for getting that done with um, Irvine and Fisichella as well completing the top 5. But now let's look at the championship standings as we go to the next round of the 1997 career mode. Let's have a look at where everyone is currently. So here the stands then after five rounds, which does include the points from Monaco from the live stream there. And Michael Schumacher leads the way with 35 points, a point ahead now of Jacques Villeneuve, who won today in this episode, with Eddie Irvine and Heinz Frentzen tied for third place on 20 points, with David Coulthard in fifth with six points, just ahead of Giancarlo Fisichella with five points. Mick Hackland, uh, Coulthard's teammate, is in seventh with four with Raul Schumacher and Gerhard Berger both on two points, with John Lacey completing the top ten with one point. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode of the 97 career mode. If we get 150 likes, guys, I would immediately upload episode six for you guys to enjoy. If you haven't already, guys, make sure to like the video and subscribe for more F1 classic content from this 1997 career mode, the 2007 career mode, and the current 2015 season as well. Hope to see you guys very soon in the next video. Until then, guys, have a fantastic day, whatever you're doing, and I shall see you guys very soon. Take care, guys.